Making plans to meet him soon. Talking softly on the telephone. It's all right, I'll soon be gone. Jump and dine and get on up. Shake your body next to mine. Ooh. Y'all know about that ZZ Hill. It's all blues Saturday. This is Saturday, May 20th. So you know I spent my day relaxing. I cleaned up my place. It let the pine saw and the and the fabuloso do his thing. <sighs> and listen to all blue Saturdays I cleaned up. You know the old school where our parents used to do on Saturdays. Clean up the spot and let the blues play. I can't help it up from Memphis, so hey, hey, the blues is alright. All right, all right, every night. Little Milton, what y'all know about that? So anyway, <clears throat> also, um, uh, this is your man Rico the Opinionist, by the way. You know, I just do opinions and stuff. Just share my thoughts about things. Oh, just, uh, you know, things that's going on in the news. Some things that are not going on in the news. I just share my thoughts. And welcome to my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. It is what it is. On this YouTube channel as well as my Facebook group. Mary Max, what's up? How are you? Ivan, what is good? So, uh, just wanted to just let y'all know while y'all you know looking at my videos and stuff, please pay attention to the, the description box. It has that wonderful PDF format. It's short story. It's only 50 pages long. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. Conversation with the absent biological father who never wanted to be found. Uh, dollar sign, Rico the opinion. This is only 10 bucks. So if you decide to hit me on the cash out, please leave me an email address so I can get it to you. All right. And this is going to be a short video. I know I always say that, but yeah, it's going to be a short one. Because yesterday on May 19th, it celebrated Malcolm X's birthday. Now, I don't know which one it is. 80-something, I'm sure, if he ever were, were allowed to be alive. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, his, his birthday should have already correlated into a holiday. And one thing I like, uh, what the scholars have always said, people like Dr. John Henry Clark, say you don't need anybody's permission to create your holiday because Yom Kippur is not even an official holiday, but the Jews take take it off anyway. Hey, Eric, I mean, I'm sorry. E. Donaldson, Ernest, what's up? Jewish people take Yom Kippur and, and Ash Wednesday and all that stuff off. It's not even a federal or state recognized holiday. They just take it off. So I understand why black people, while we don't just create holidays from the people that we admire. It should be an Ida B. Wells. On her birthday, it should be something special. Fannie Lou Hamer, Malcolm X. You know, not, these are the people that obviously were not the, were very easy to um, remix and make it more palatable to the mainstream. We can't get some black R&B singer to sing uh, like "Happy Birthday," create a Malcolm X "Happy Birthday" song. So. I, I decided last year on, on May 19th every year, I was going to take my own day off. Regardless if I was working for somebody else or, or as a contractor or if I had my own, whatever. I was going to take my Malcolm X day. And speaking of Malcolm, we should continue to go further. I think uh, May should be men's month. And uh, one of our major, major events should be, should be held on Malcolm X's birthday. Malcolm X is a very significant brother, extra significant. You know, I've read more of his stuff than probably anybody else's stuff. Uh, his relates to their writings and their speeches and stuff. It would have been his 95th birthday. Thank you, Mary Max. 95 years old. You know, and and, uh, and one thing about what's so significant about Malcolm X, his stuff is still very relevant. Everything he said, and. You know what? What if we had listened to Malcolm? Rogers, Sarai, what's, Sarai, what's up? What if we had listened to Malcolm? I mean, really listened to him. You know, uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago. What if we had listened to him? Oh, hold on a second. Let me get across here. Hold on. Ooh, 
<laughs> Alright, so I'm back. So now, what if we had listened to Malcolm? What if we had listened to him? We would have been a different American in this country. Black folks would be a total different group. But we let other people come in and join forces with the oppressor, the oppressors of our of our race. You know, the integrationists, the multiculturalists. We let them come in and, and of course the media gave them bigger mi microphones and bigger platforms. Y'all know who they are. <sighs> but you know, those same folks who was talking about Malcolm X, those same black people, because you know, white folks don't like anything that seems to going it seems to look as if it's going to interrupt their, their supremacy or their their being on top, their platform, their positioning in the, in American culture. Economically, politically, educationally, etc. Uh, they don't like anybody, but thing is, black people, when we, uh, uh, <clears throat> hold on one second, let me go here, it says, Rogers Ray says, Malcolm X's words ring true, and Malcolm X's legacy, and MLK's legacy lives on, but you know what, I'm, let me, let me, uh, I don't know what MLK's legacy is, cause, uh, cause, uh, <laughs> His legacy of integration, look at us. We're at the bottom of all the poles. His legacy of little black boys and white girls holding their hand. That ain't done us any good. Uh, sitting around letting folks treat us like dogs and shoot us and all this shit. That, I don't know what MLK's legacy is. How, it bene how it's benefited heterosexual masculine black men. Now, in my defense, his legacy probably was great for the integrationists. What about those of us who are nationalists? You know, those of us who wanted freedom and independence, wanted our own. Uh, Dr. King didn't get that message until this last year. So I'm all, I'm all email, I'm all Malcolm X. I appreciate Dr. King from 66 to 68. But that Dr. King before the end just buried us permanently. Now, the MLK's legacy is great for the church folks who scared to, to work outside and believe it in God. But Malcolm X's words and legacy was do for self. Dr. King was like, we all need to be here together. Let them sick dogs on you. Let them bite you in the ass. Let them call you in words. Let them throw milkshakes in your face. Let them do all this shit to you. So we can appeal to his morality. We can appeal to his. <laughs> Malcolm X said, you put your hands on me, I put my hands on you. So respectfully, I disagree with the MLK legacy. Because his legacy is why we so messed up today. Him and his crew wanted integration. They wanted assimilation. And uh, they wanted LGBT after he died. That's the first thing Bayard Rustin did. The main homosexual who was over him, who was one of his advisors, who told him, go to nonviolent route. You know, pray about it. Had him praying about it. But Bayard Rustin, according to reports, he was praying on every white man that they had a meeting with. Praying that he have sex with him. Oh, Y'all come on now, read your own history. Don't have me just barking out stuff because it's history. But Malcolm X was the man. If I didn't know any better, after reading Malcolm X's books, I swear Malcolm X was God. You know, he was awesome. And we go back and look all his words when he talks about the the, the, the white liberal, talks about the Republican. <laughs> He talks about all of that, and we're still, and we, since we ignored him, we fell for every liberal trick in the book. But if we had listened to Malcolm, we would not be the people that we are. They all messed up and all weird and on the, on the top of all the negative, negative, uh, lists and at the very bottom of the positive lists. Yeah. We should have listened to Malcolm. That's why I take his birthday the most the serious out of all of them because he was on it. Malcolm X was the, was the key to the, the reunification of Africans and African Americans. That's why they really wanted him to be gone. Because one thing about it, they do not want African Americans to recre reconnect with Africans on, in the diaspora. Because I don't understand. Why don't we read? It's a mess. But you know, you know what Malcolm talked about. And all you gotta do is just read his books. It still is almost as if he wrote them last month. Look at his speeches on YouTube and TikTok. The man is still doing his thing. Still. 
trying to teach us. We got Dr. Claude Anderson, who is close to 90 years old, still trying to teach hard-headed Negroes. Do it for self. Get your own school. Instead of us listening to Malcolm, we sit around here complaining about what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida. Well, he's trying to take out heck of history, uh, black history in the uh, public schools. Who cares? Who cares? Because you have history books in your home, don't you? Why don't you teach your own children? That's what I just shake my head all the stuff that we're fussing and cussing about. Things we can do on our own. They don't want us to go to their school, but we have access to bricks and nails and wood and hammers. How come we won't build our own damn schools? And every time you say that, somebody black gets offended about at the at, at the idea of doing for self. You know, when Malcolm X was alive, he when he was when he was alive, Malcolm X was talking about Wakanda. Y'all know how y'all went out and, and wore coming to America costumes and and just went all just went nuts over the Black Panther movie. Went nuts. <laughs> But how in the hell y'all gonna be all over y'all gonna be all over the Wakanda movie? But then you didn't listen to Malcolm X. With Wakanda, not the first not the second one, but Wakanda, the concept of it all is Malcolm X's vision. Black people doing for self, engineering, technology, uh, economics, education, military, black people do it for self. So I, let, I knew then, when those Black Panther movies came, I said, black people don't want no Wakanda. Because in Wakanda, there were no homosexuals. Yeah, there weren't even no light-skinned folks in Wakanda. Y'all saw the movie? I watched it. The first one, I'm talking about the first one. The, the second one made it just a whole lesbian fest. But the first one, you know, so all those, you ain't see, you ain't see nobody lighter than me in that movie. That's what Malcolm X was talking about. What kind of black people doing for black people, supporting black people, marrying black people, and raising our, our nation? So I didn't understand. I was confused when I saw all these black people going gaga over the Wakanda movie when they, when they had such MLK followers. MLK wanted, wanted a lot of cream in the coffee. And it wasn't until the end they understood that he accepted what Malcolm was talking about because what did he do? He started saying, where's our check? And that offended, of course, the dominant white society, but also offended the integrationist blacks. No, what we need here, what we need is education. What we need is to, we use laws of bad citizens. And I got my jobs at the post office, so uh, what, what gonna happen to my job? That's, and guess what, those same MLK blacks, when we talk about reparations, we don't need no cash payments. What we need is just education. They say the same thing. So, you no, know, uh, I wish we had, I wish my grandparents, because I wasn't born until 1969, I wish that my grandparents would have listened to Malcolm. I wish black folks in America, the American Negro back in the 50s and 60s would have listened to him. We would have been in better shape than we're in now. But, you know, we let, we like to hear you know, a lot of great gospel songs and people singing to us and entertaining us instead of getting about the business. And that, that is what happened to us. And we still act, we act as if we don't know how to uh, get ourselves out of this situation. And so when this birthday came around again, I, uh, you know, I just said, well, you know, I have to make another vow or promise to myself that next year, we have to have a real celebration for Malcolm X. We have to, we just have to. And we don't have to make it a state or, or a federal holiday. We can just all you know, do like we do. Text everybody, say, hey, we're going to this park. Or we're, we're, we're going to be off. We're going to celebrate Malcolm's birthday. We're going to talk about his speeches, talk about his legacy, talk about reparations. We're going to continue to have that conversation, even up until his next birthday. Because that's what, that, that is what's needed. And so, but, um, but, but I want to make this video, I want to express, you know, a happy birthday to Brother Malcolm, but I also want to express how important it is for black men in America, heterosexual, masculine black men, to connect with Malcolm X's philosophy. 
But that's the only way we'll be able to move forward if you're interested. See, I, I talk like this, but I know the mass of black dudes. If you ain't talking about LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, or Michael Jordan, no sports, black men don't want to do no work. They don't. Uh, we say, Rod Shea, uh, you have a lot of knowledge, and I appreciate your distinct perspective. I have to admit that as a millennial and Christian, I have to do way more Malcolm, do read more. Yeah, I have to do way more reading on Malcolm X. Or read, Yeah, you have to, brother. You have to. Malcolm X was the, the shiznik. He was the shiznik. He was, he was the way. You know how they say Jesus said, I am the light, I am the way. Malcolm was the light, he was the way. And we and just like a lot of folk did Jesus, when it looked like it was work involved, we went the we went the easy route. We went the integration route. We went to assimilation route. We went to well now we all multicultural, diverse and inclusion, intersection, any everything to keep away from doing what we're supposed to do. And when I hear these these mother lovers talking like that, so look at these scared the cats. They want to do just no do what they're supposed to do. <laughs> They'll rather take these deflective these deflective routes, these detours. You never get any freedom if you don't fight for yourself. And all we do, hoping we'll get a pat on the back from the same folks that MLK thought he was going to get. You're still trying to get the pat on the back from those same people. Their grandchildren. <laughs> Their great grandchildren. We're still trying to get those pats on the back. How about we just try being black? If we truly like the movie Wakanda, or like the concept of Wakanda, <laughs> y'all know it work has to be done. That means even even a major and doctor, if they uh, went to college or they went to school to become engineers or medical doctors or professors or scientists or architects, they all did it for the progression of black people. And again, that concept seems to upset a lot of these so-called free free blacks today. Seems to throw them off a bit. Oops. I must have had a baseball game there. I see people walking back. I walked to Texas Rangers one. So, yeah, like more and more people are coming out. So, but anyway, I'm going to come down here so I'm going to run into folks. But, uh, yeah, it seems to, seems to offend. So, but what I was about to say is I think that more American black men need to connect with Malcolm. You do. If we are destined to become, because the only way our community get back to get together, get where it's supposed to be in the positioning, we have to get black men on board. Because the women are just running just haywire. They're just doing everything, anything to get attention from anybody. We're the most educated. Ah, black men are the ride, first rising, what's that, what do y'all say, sisters? We're the, the quickest rising group when it comes to entrepreneurs. We're, we're, we're opening more businesses. Ah, oh, damn these businesses, dog. I can't even come to the park. Who is this? Okay, it's not a big dog, so. Ugh. <laughs> but anyway, I'm trying to be cool. It's broad as this dog. And uh, but anyway, uh, we need to. Black men need to be connected to Malcolm. Cause uh, that's the only way our community is gonna get back. To like like we were between 1865 and probably 1965. No, not in discrimination sense, but in the way of, if we want to get to Wakanda, we're going to have to invest in black men. The women are not going to do it. They can't do it. They can't get through those doors like we can. We decide to really get on code as black men. I know it's how many black men? I don't know about what, 12 million? At least 5 million black men, 6 million black men got on code. You'll see a movement in this country. It was almost like that, you know, during the Mean Man March when Farrakhan had 1.2 million or 2.5 million black men, but the message wasn't there. Well, he said, go back, go on and reclaim your neighborhood. He did that, but I guess the message didn't, didn't, didn't stick. No, you got to atone. We got that too. We understood that. But it needs to be brothers need to just read pick up pick, pick up Malcolm X book and start reading look at some of his videos on YouTube and TikTok. We need to Because our, our race in this country is not going to be respected not going to be in a position. We should have been in We should be in economically politically educationally 
science and the sciences and all of that. We can't be in those positions unless we take care of our do what we're supposed to do as men. Well, it's so much, it's so much tribalism between black men. You got, again, we got black Greek males. You got uh, Masonic males. You got church Christian males. You got Muslim males. We all just divide it. Then you have independent males. You got Democratic males. You got about six black Republicans. <laughs> we're just so, we're so divided. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, we're going to have to get it together. You know, we don't know who to vote for, how to vote as men. We don't. We've been voting Democrat. Hold on a second, y'all. And it has not paid off for us, not one damn iota. Unless you are, I uh, guess you're an integrationist and a homosexual. But if you're an independent thinking black man, a black, black nationalist black man, the voting Democrat has not worked in our favor. You know, we, we, we're doing all right because we know about working. You know, as far as the politics part of it, we're going to have to get become more political, black men. We're going to have to become more political. And I'm not talking about in a democratic sense, because you got a lot of you black dudes who... Uh, who participate in democratic politics, I need black men to form an alliance, all of us, and participate in independence politics. Meaning we become this huge voting blocks and the, and the sisters who, who love us, well, y'all can come in too, but it's work we have to do as black men. Heterosexual, masculine, black men, if there's some gay ones who believe in this mission, cool, you're welcome, but we're not, what we're not going to do is waste any of our goddamn time talking about no damn trans, LGBT, and all that foolishness. That's what the Democratic Party is for, pushing y'all's wayward ass thinking. But what I'm talking about is black men pushing the politics of black men and black family, black man, black woman, and black child. Get it? That's what we're doing. And so... Because until we decide to get together and be men together, we are not going to be a part of. We're not. Don't even. Don't you know? Let me tell y'all something. Did y'all know these American politics don't even? Don't, they don't even count us. They don't even count us. Cause they know we're just trying to round here, trying to round us some cooch. All we want to do is talk about sports, and that's all Negroes like to talk about sports and pussy. Debate me on it. You ask them anything about the political system. Or how, or talk about how they can get together and create policy that will protect black men and black boys. Or how to change the school system, they will know what to do. But you talking about the who's the highest score, LeBron James or, or uh, Michael Jordan, you can't get these Negroes to shut up. And that's why we need to change our focus. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's why a lot of brothers need, should have been into Malcolm X. Malcolm X gave us instructions. <laughs> There's a book he wrote that I read and I really loved. It's called The End of The End of White World Supremacy. Or White End of White Supremacy, White World Supremacy. By Malcolm X. A bunch of lectures. Very good book. I may need to go back and read it again. And of course read his autobiography. And that's what brothers need to do. And also read that Willie Lynch letter. The black men are making it sense. Y'all got all the majors. You, 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 you got all the job positions. You sit on boards. You uh, in banks and corporations and in the police department. Y'all everywhere. And still, no, the needle is not moving for black men. On this Malcolm X's birthday weekend, we need to become more focused. Yeah. Y'all think of everything else to do other than what we, the work we need to be doing. You know, what's the latest thing that black men want to get involved in? So many things. I think it's cigar bars and shit like that. You've been in there a while, but that seemed to be the, the new thing to make you feel special. You know, I guess because I am not, I don't smoke cigars. I'm not into sports like that. I don't care. But I can see, I just kind of pay attention to where I, where we, where we like to uh, put our attention on. Instead so of coming together as a group and just talking and say, hey, look at all the statistics that are not in our favor. Black men, most incarcerated, black men, the main group that's shot by the police, the main group. Yeah, everybody gets shot, but it's black males. Educational system, black boys, uh, at least three times suspended from school. What else? Black males. One of the main ones, main ones, caught up in the child support system. <laughs> but yet we don't have any black male groups 
to, to come together. The black men don't come together to try to bring an end to that. And who gets their ass to handed to them the most in state and local politics? Black males. And every time they show somebody committing crimes in these neighborhoods and whatever, black males. So it's not up to white liberals. It's not up to women to solve the black male problem. Even though we didn't cause a lot of them. But we can get together and, and solve them. You understand? Hell, reparations can be paid if more black men. <clears throat> you said high blood pressure and proper tension? Yeah, look what we live under. How, yeah, stress. Yeah. Yeah, but we live in stress every day. You know, those of us who give a damn, we live under stress, depression, and anxiety. Black men, black boys, that's right. Now, if you want to go for our health route, there are more things we can do to get our health together. But that, but uh, but I'm talking about the politics of how to change this shit. You know, they do easy stuff to keep from fighting. No, easy. Get into alcohol and other drugs. They they become preachers. You don't have to do no fighting to become a Negro preacher. Because of the plantation, the, the preacher and the black female, the two freest people to walk the plantation without having being checked. But the, the Negro preacher was given his assignment then. Now you got these liberal black Democrats who got the assignment, LGBT and immigrants. Every Negro politician is black, white, black, or fe black female or black male, and he says he's a Democrat, his main two issues, just like Brandon Johnson in Chicago, MLGT, I mean, LGBT and immigrants, they never have anything for black boys. That's what I'm saying, black men, people who are like me, who actually want a Wakanda, not just a movie. You have to change your behavior and act like it. So brother Malcolm, Look, I can you know, try to do my little part of my little tiny YouTube channel. And I, even in my writings. But I, they won't listen to me unless I get on a show that a lot of them like to watch. You know, P-Valley, Power, Power Book of Cain, Power Ghost, uh, Black Mafia Family, Sisters, Miss Pat, and uh, you know, stuff like that. That's where all our eyeballs seem to be and stuff like that. You know, trash, TV. But anyway, Malcolm, we're going to keep trying, man. Got to get black men together. Get them into therapy. Get them into Planet Fitness or LA Fitness or 24 Hour Fitness. Yeah, we're going to get them together. Get our, get our boys into all boys school where they can be taught. You know, stop worrying about what the hell these other folks doing and, and put work into what we need to do for ourselves. But anyway, I just wanted to say that about uh, Malcolm and how he connects to black men. And thank y'all for listening. This is your boy Rico. Rico the Opinionist. I'll talk to y'all. Uh, hold on one second. Roger say, how did uh, how did Malcolm X feel about black immigrants? I'm curious for your, your insight on this. My grandfather came from Belize. I don't know how he felt about it. I didn't read anything. Uh, and he built his business from the ground up, you no, know, 50 years from the ground. I don't know how, you know, I don't know how Malcolm felt about that. I don't, he never said, I never said anything when he spoke about it. I would go find some and see what he felt about it. And you know, uh, <clears throat> no. and you know, your, your grandfather was just like any other black person in, in this country. Who was already here? They built most. They built everything they had from the ground up. So, welcome, welcome, uh, welcome from Belize. You know, <laughs> so that was nothing special for immigrants to come home and build from the ground up. Black folks built from the ground from their hands up since they were brought over here, snatched and brought over here. So that was. I hear you though. Uh, but anyway, y'all be cool. It's your man Rico. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.